she would like slap my feet and I was like, oh God, this is so, this is so intense, but I kind of like it. <laughs> um. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a Q&A and I'm really excited to answer all your questions. And thank you so much for all the support. Um, I know you really loved the Vagan of a walkthrough and just so you know, there's much more coming and I can't wait to really get into detail um, even more. So let's start. First question, do you feel like the Russians trained more in terms of hours than the English? Um, I'd say, well, my time at the Royal Ballet School, we often started at nine and we had academics at the same time and then we finished around 6.30. Never usually went longer than 6.30. Um, in Russia, the only difference was obviously the Russian students were doing their academics and um, as a foreigner um, we were doing our academics online or, you know, not at all if you'd already done your exams, etc. So you could say I had a bit more free time, but I was absolutely exhausted from the classes. So for example, we'd have technique class which was much more intense than ballet class at Royal Ballet School. I don't know, you know, at the time you'd think, because I was only 13 or, or something at the Royal Ballet School, at the Royal Ballet School I'd find it just as intense but I didn't find it as intense obviously and um, so we'd have technique class for about an hour and 45 um, at Vaganova, so a bit longer, an hour and 45, sometimes two hours. Um, and it would be obviously extremely intense. Then we'd have an hour's lunch break, and then um, we'd have classes in the afternoon from about 2.30, and then we'd go from 2.30 until like 8 p.m., sometimes 8.30 if we had rehearsals. So obviously, you know, that was um, a long day because we started around ten, sometimes nine, sometimes eleven, um, and then finish around 8.30. And the next question following that was, what is the schedule like? Are all the hours helpful or overtiring? Well, I've sort of answered about the schedule. Um, it was like ballet um, for two hours, then lunch break, then maybe um, duet, you know, pas de deux, they call it duet and character or some other classes. Um, so two other classes and then rehearsals. Um, and the only difference is, you know, we'd finish maybe two hours earlier in England, but we'd still get about the same amount of hours. Um, and yeah, it's just, it is tiring, extremely tiring, but you sort of, like anything, you know, you get used to it and then it becomes quite normal. But you know, my feet were always exhausted. I remember I used to have like, you know, feet baths, <laughs> foot baths, um, every night in Epsom salts. I get a massage every weekend, every Sunday, we would all collapse because we worked six days a week. And that was another difference in um, England. We only had like half a day on Saturday and finish at 12, but in Russia, it was a full day. Um, yeah, so we would all be just absolutely exhausted on the Sunday, but, um, Every day was a chance to improve and, you know, it, it, they have this, you know, big philosophy of, you know, don't waste time. Um, and so not every class was obviously extremely intense. Um, the technique class, I'd say, was the most intense, but everything else was hard, but not definitely nowhere near as difficult. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't completely overtiring to the point where you can't possibly do it. Too. Any advice for picking up combinations quickly? That's quite a good one because I am um, also from working with quite a few students now. Um, a lot of them find it difficult to pick up combinations quickly. Like um, some find it too difficult to remember the combination and remember remember their corrections at the same time. So whilst you're thinking of corrections, they forget the combination. For me, it was always very much um, tied to the rhythm. So I was, found it very easy to pick up exercises when it was associated very clearly with rhythm. 
and obviously the teacher um, was very rhythmical and musical and all my teachers have been that way but it's also getting to know the teacher as well I feel like you know and you've probably noticed you pick up combinations so much better when you know your teacher and you know their style whereas going into an into an audition let's say you don't know the teacher at all you don't know the pianist at all it's slightly it requires a little bit more concentration to pick up and obviously during an audition scenario that's when you need to pick things up because you need to show that you can pick things up um, so I would try to focus on the rhythm of the exercise so you know if they're going two to the front and four to the back you know it'll be like yum pum ba dum ba yum ba dum ba dum pum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba you know and um so then you can be like two to the front and two to the back and could it be a could it be a sorry sutanu e gote pum ba dum you know like almost sing it to yourself some people find it helpful to say out loud um, obviously not super loud, but under your breath, you know, saying, um, you know, do to the front, like this. For me, like I say, just rhythm. You know, and that's how I'd um, pick it up. So yeah, try listening to the music and, and sort of singing the combination to yourself and feeling that rhythm of the exercise. Three, did I train in Vaganova style before going there? Great question. Um, yes and no. Obviously, um, I was at the Royal Valley School and that was definitely not Vaganova when I was there. It was much more Chiquetti. That's London for you. <laughs> it was much more Chiquetti. Um, so, you know, which obviously didn't massively suit me at the time. I was also growing, so I was sort of gangly, trying to do all these quick little movements. And, um, you know, <laughs> I found it quite difficult. Um, but prior to that, I had a Russian coach in England from age nine. And um, I was seeing her regularly. And, um, you know, I was always very shocked when I first started training with her, how difficult it was, and I had to hold my legs, and I was always coming out of class like a tomato, but kind of loved it at the same time, you know, and she would like slap my feet, and I was like, oh God, this is so, this is so intense, but I kind of like it. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I kept seeing her a little bit during the Royal Ballet School, but you know, the Royal Ballet School routine and uh, schedule was tiring. So I didn't really have the time to do that. But I kept in touch with her, obviously, because I was looking to actually move to the Vaganova eventually, which luckily did happen. Um, and so the answer is yes, but then when I went to Vaganova, obviously I realized, okay, this is the real deal. And I have a lot of catching up to do. It was probably easier to slip into it because I had had that training early on than if I had had nothing, definitely. Um, but yeah, still really difficult. Was it hard to leave England and learn Russian so fast? Um, so like I say, I had this burning desire to go to the Vaganova. And although I did cry on the plane on the way there, um, because you know, it's pretty terrifying, but I made a deal with myself and my parents. I said, look, if I, if I hate it, I can always come back and, you know, go to the Royal Ballet Upper School because I had been offered a place there. Um, so I said, oh, I'll go for a year and then come back again and go to the Upper School. Well, <laughs> that turned into four years there, so, and graduating. So um, I obviously liked it in the end. But was it hard to learn the language? Um, well, initially I knew a little bit, not much at all, but the classes, were very well taught obviously and they used uh, their bodies, the teachers used their bodies to demonstrate to me and they would often say not like this but like this, you know. In Russian I'd easily pick stuff up and then the body parts came next because we were constantly screamed at, you know, head, um, leg higher, back straight. So I learned very quickly what those words were because they were screamed at us. Um, every day and then the you know colloquial conversation came you sort of learn a bit like a baby you know because you're sort of surrounded by it all the time 
and it's kind of impossible not to take it in um, because I'm not in England. It's not like, you know, I'm hearing Russian occasionally, it's all the time, so you just pick it up. So over time, it came to me and it wasn't that difficult. All right, next question. Are you going to perform on stage again? If not, I would really love to see some solos. Oh, well, thanks. Well, I will post some solos for you. I've got a few. Um, and yeah, I'd love to share. In fact, we could do a variation class, couldn't we, from some of the solos? And I could coach a little bit. Wouldn't that be fun? Um, and, you know, I think that's the burning question. We'll see. We'll see is the answer because obviously I'm not attached to a company anymore. I'm doing my own thing now. I freelance. I coach a lot now. Uh, it takes up most of my days. And um, I've got my Ballet with Isabella website now, which I give a lot of time to as well. Um, I always welcome opportunities to perform again because obviously, as you can see from my Vaganova videos, I really worked extremely hard um, to master my craft. So any opportunity that comes along that I am interested in and passionate about, I will go for it and um, look to perform again. It's not, you know, a no um, from me. I keep my ears and eyes open for opportunity and I just like to do a lot of things and I very much enjoy not being tied down um, to one place because I'm a very creative person so I like to do a lot um, of different things. Um, but the short answer is, I hope so. All right, next question. Breath and movement, how to coordinate? Um, that's quite a good question. And breathing is something you've got to practice as well because I think so many people hold their breath, right, when they dance. And that can obviously affect your performance because your muscles aren't getting the um, the oxygen that they need. And what I found is when I was doing a solo or practicing our exams, I would always practice where I would breathe. And I noticed a pattern of where I would breathe and it was usually when I was landing was the breath out or bringing arms down was the breath out and going up um, in a pirouette or up in a jump, even up in a développé was the breath in because it also helped you balance, you know, so it'd be like, and, and, and Sison, Badaburre, you know, Develope, you know. So I would always sort of breath in at the highlight of the movement and then the landing, relax when you plie because it also helps you get grounded, you know, um, when you come down. So try that for yourself next time, breathing in on the highlight of the movement and breathing out on the relaxation. All right, next question. Technical differences um, between England and the Vaganova, other than being more reserved. So this person was um, referring back to my other video, um, the differences between the Royal Ballet School and the Vaganova, my experience. Um, and obviously I said the Royal Ballet School was a lot more reserved. But you know, what I mean by that is um, less turnout, lower legs, um, not as everything was just more in Russia, bigger jumps, etc. But as you can see by some of the exercises as well, you can see that everything was just more extreme. Like you'd never find an exam like that at the Royal Ballet School with those kinds of combinations. I think those are the hardest combinations you will ever see. <laughs> and sometimes I look back and I think, I don't actually know how we managed to do some of those combinations. Um, but it's amazing, I'm so proud of all of us for doing that um, and doing it well, like it's so much work. And that's what makes them so good. We're doing, you know, the highest level of ballet and it's 
you know, the highest level that's sort of unreachable, you know? And I think that's how you, you know, they want you to graduate. They want you to graduate with no limitations, like you're ready. You know, after that, after that school, you feel so ready. I think that's another difference, like graduating from the Royal Ballet School or any other school really, like obviously you're ready to a degree, but maybe you've got a few weaknesses still. Whereas I feel like at the Vaganova, they try so hard to prepare you completely. So we all feel strong in pretty much everything. So you're so ready and that makes, you know, a big difference. And you are, you should be at your highest level. Obviously not in experience terms, but in technique terms, when you leave school, that is the best you're going to get. And from then on, going into a company, you gain different things like experience, stagecraft, but technique wise, that's why the school years are so important. Because once you're in a company, you're on your own, really, there's not someone pushing you all the time and drilling you like to that degree um so i'd say their preparation and getting you ready is how they are so different from other places all right guys well i've got one more question and then we'll leave it there for today because i don't want the video to get too long for you and that would be cleaner and quicker pity allegro any tips well i do feel like this um needs its own video um, but I will put a video of how to improve Petit Allegro on my website, ballowithisabella.com. Make sure you subscribe to that. Well, join the community, create an account. It's completely free. And then you can get my um, monthly um, email, my newsletter, and you can see what's about and see if you'd be interested in taking one of my online classes, etc. Um, what's been popular is the how to improve arabesque and attitude video um, and a, a, actually a girl from Vaganova um, who's Australian took it and she said it's been helping her immensely so I really recommend you taking it because you know arabesque was a, kind of my thing so I really know what helped so take a look at the website and um, rent the video it's just four pounds to rent anyway getting back to the Pitti Allegro um, so with Pitti Allegro when I was growing and I was really sort of lanky and long. I noticed how weak it was for me. It was really difficult. And um, even when at Vaganova, it wasn't as good as it is now um, because I was super flexible um, at Vaganova and hadn't quite found my strength in my inner thighs. So you've got to have really strong inner thighs and just have a good connection with them as well as really strong ends of the toes and um, intrinsic footwork. So this kind of thing, you know, pushing off the floor all the time really helps. And um, an exercise where you lunge on one leg in parallel and just push off, you know. So we're strengthening the demi point. Again, I'll show you more, but basically to sum up, um, you've got to strengthen your intrinsic foot muscles, your fast twitch muscles. Look up fast twitch in terms of sport and why it's so important. It's basically the quickness you can rebound off things and that's what you need, you know, fast twitching muscles. And when I was rehabbing from my injury, the Australian physios really worked on my fast twitch so that when I then went back to Russia and did my graduation exam, I hadn't lost anything really. I was so like, you know, strong. Um, so I'll go into more detail, like I say, but um, I hope that gives you a little little idea of how to improve it that's where to start anyway getting your quickness of, of footwork nice and strong and active all right guys thank you so much for watching this video please like share and subscribe another vegan of a walkthrough is coming very soon super excited um, one of the questions i didn't get onto was how did i get into vegan and i think that's going to be its own video on its own, isn't it? Because that's a story time. That's a Vagana chat, I think. <laughs> More Vagana chats will come soon. But anyway, thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you all very soon.